morning. My name is April and I will be your conference operator today. At this time, I would like to welcome everyone to the Performance Management REST API conference call. All lines have been placed on mute to prevent any background noise. After the speaker's remarks, there will be a question and answer session. If you would like to ask a question during this time, simply press star then the number one on your telephone keypad. If you would like to withdraw your question, press the pound key. Thank you. I would now like to turn the call over to your host, Dildar Kalong, VP, Vice President, Infrastructure Management, Community Board. Please go ahead. Hello, everyone. Um, welcome to the monthly webcast for the IAM Global User Community for today, June 14, 2014, or June 17, 2014. Today's topic is Performance Management um, REST API. Um, this will be presented by Sylvia, I mean, Trish, Krishna, Sylvia, Rathnayak. Rathnayaka, uh, Senior Engineering Services Arts Architects, along with Prabhu Nikhiran, um, Director of Software Engineering. After the presentation, I would like everyone to take a brief nine-minute survey to provide feedback on the presentation. And with that, I'll turn this over to Kishan. Thank you, Kishan. Uh, thanks, uh, Dilda. Actually, uh, Prabhu, I think uh, you'll be going yeah, through the fine. first section of the uh, slides. Yep, I'm, I'm going to be starting us off. Uh, do I have host privileges here? I, somebody should promote me to host so I can move the slides along. Um, there we go. All right. Okay, um, Kishan, can you confirm that you can see uh, the, the next set of slides that I'm about to present? I do see them, yes. Okay, excellent. All right, so uh, we're here to talk about uh, RESTful Web Services uh, on the CA Performance Management Solution today. Um, let me start off with uh, an introduction, just a gen general introduction on what you know. What what are RESTful Web Services? Um, you know, basically, you know, in a nutshell, it's just another communication uh, method, uh, and it's a it's a, it really, you know, has has evolved over the, uh, you know, or gained popularity over the last few years, um, and it, it's just become a simpler alternative to SOAP. Um, it, you, know, you can you can see you, you can actually see the, the the widespread adoption now by you know, even mainstream Web 2.0 service providers like you know, Google and Yahoo uh, are are really adopting moving to REST. So, so really, you can see over the last couple of years, there's, there's been a big um, shift, I would say, from from SOAP to, to REST. Um, REST is, is is a set of uh, architectural principles uh, to to design your web services with, uh, and and these the you know it basically it focuses on your system's resources um, and how the 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 state of these resources are addressed and, and transferred. Um, communication is, is, this, this communication is, is done over HTTP. Um, you can perform all kinds of uh, CRUD operations on these resources. Uh, with so, and when I say CRUD operations, that uh, to folks that don't know what CRUD means, it's uh, create, read, update, and delete operations. Uh, and you typically so you do that all over HTTP uh, using HTTP methods like uh, get, post, put. Delete. Um, you know, typically, GET does your read for you. Um, you know, POST is, is, is a create operation, typically. Uh, PUT is a, an update operation, and then DELETE is for DELETE. Um, now, the, the nice thing uh, that REST does is it makes your services or your resources available um, you know, via these, these endpoints that are, um, that are structured like almost like URI, so it's like a it's a, like a directory directory listing of all your uh, services or resources. Um, and uh, and the last point there uh, that I wanted to make was uh, the output can be in different formats. Uh, you know, popular formats are, are the CSV, JSON, XML, uh, etc. So. Went too fast there. Uh, for uh, REST clients, so what can you use for a REST client? 
Um, typically, you, you can, you know, if, you're, if all you're doing is a read operation, if all you're going to do is view um, the, the resources, that, you know, and, and just read uh, the get operation, you can do that just by on any web browser. You can get on any web browser uh, and do a read operation. Um, if you're going to, you know, if you're really going to do CRUD and you're, you're going to be creating stuff, updating things, deleting things, uh, you need a more of a full-featured client. Uh, and some some good examples are um, uh, there's a Chrome there's a Chrome browser-based client that I like to use uh, the Java REST client the WizTools.org REST client is another one that that's my favorite and that's the one I'm going to be using actually in this demo um, so so lots of different options out available out there um, you know, it depends on you know, get a feel for a couple of these and see what you like um, so so it's uh, and lots of options out there. So it depends on again what operation you're trying to do. If you're trying to do a, um, a, a create a more advanced, you know, create, update, delete operation, you do want a full featured client. All right. So now uh, let's get to meat of the topic, which is uh, web services in the uh, CA Performance Manager uh, solution. Um, so, so web services are uh, can, can be accessed from two major components. One is the data aggregator, uh, and then the other is through uh, CA Performance Center, which is the UI component. Um, all of the requests and responses for the Performance Manager solution are through XML. So that's the form, that's the format that we've adopted is, is XML for uh, most everything that we expose. Um, most most everything that you can do uh, via the UI today, uh, and I'll say most everything, not so not everything, but most everything is exposed via REST, um, so that you can you can you know integrate with other systems, so you can automate. Um, you know, if you have an OSS environment and, and you, you know you can in integrate with your CMDB, uh, something gets plugged into your network, uh, you know, the performance manager solution knows. About it right away because uh, you know you've you've integrated with via web services. You've basically told the system uh, that there's this new thing on my network. Go discover it, or you know go discover uh, a basic set of uh, 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 metric families on it, for example, right? So 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 it really is to automate and be able to integrate with other systems, um, and then also things that are uh, you know not not you know, not really. Uh, the UI may not be the best best thing to do, like mass updates and mass the deletion of things. Uh, and there there might be times when you need to do that. And and you know, it's it's easier, it's much easier to just do it do it through web services um, than by you know uh, going to the UI and finding your devices and 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 deleting them one at a time. Or um, you know, there there is a multi-select feature in the UI today. Uh, that you can multi-select devices with um, and, and delete them, for example. But even that, uh, for if you're if you're looking at a very large-scale operation, even that doesn't scale well. So you know you really uh, want to be doing most of your bulk operations uh, through through web services. Uh, the other example here that I had was uh, uh, updating or overriding your interface speed. That's a bulk operation you can you can definitely use web services for. Uh, I'll be switching back and forth between, um, uh, uh, you know, I'll show you some demos and then I'll switch back to slide content. So I'll switch back and forth here for a bit. Um, you know, I wanted to start you guys off with the data aggregator REST web services. Uh, so the, the, the end point for that is your, on, so on your DA host, um, 8581 is the port. Um, you go slash REST and that gives you all of the available uh, endpoints or resources available uh, for you to access from the DA. Um, some some good examples of things you can do are you can set up your discovery profiles, you can um, look at devices, uh, device components, etc. using these web services. Um, we do allow you to take a look at the schema so that you can build more complex uh, requests. Uh, there's documentation. The, these web services are self-documenting, as you'll see. I'll show you in a minute. 
um, and, and we provide uh, documentation that shows you how to perform various CRUD operations. Um, the, the DEA web services don't require any authentication, so uh, you know, they're, they're, they're pretty open. Um, you, and, and they're, 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 right now, they don't require any authentication, and so you can, you, any, pretty much anyone that has access to your DEA can access them. Um, so we do plan on supporting uh, authentication for DEA web services in the future. All right, so I, I'm going to quickly cut over to a, uh, a, a quick demo of just showing you the uh, endpoint for the, the REST web services on the DA. Uh, let me go ahead and All right, so I'm, I'm, I have my Chrome browser up here, and because I'm all I'm doing now is just showing you the web service, and I'm only going to be doing a lot of reads. I can just use a web browser to do this. Uh, so I'll just go to my DA. Yes, 8581. So my DA host colon 8581 slash REST, and that gets me to the REST endpoint here. Um, what I'm going to do is maybe show you an example of, so I want to look at my devices, um, and so here's the web service endpoint for device. You can go there, and this is what I was talking about when I said self-documenting. You, know, you can get from the web services, you can get to you know, any, any rest slash, any web service slash documentation should get you to the documentation for that. And that documentation really gives you an idea of how to do all of the CRUD operations you need. Uh, so you can uh, you, know, you can do uh, a, a, just a simple get and, and read a, you know, a or get a specific device by giving it the ID of the device. Um, you can get a list of devices. Uh, so you know rest slash devices uh, should get you basically all of your devices. Um, you can do updates, deletes. So each of these sections will will actually show you you know what is the URL you need to go to. Uh, what is the HTTP method you need to be using to perform that operation? Uh, and also gives you a schema, so if you're doing more complex things like uh, filtering the list of devices returned, for example, uh, you can get into the schema and, and take a look at what attributes you can actually filter by. So I'll, I'll get into an example of that uh, in, in, an upcoming, in an upcoming slide. But uh, right now I just wanted to show you the, that it's self-documenting, you can look at all of how to perform all of the CRUD operations uh, from the documentation here. And I'm going to switch back now to um, the presentation. Oops. All right, stop sharing here so I can go back to the presentation and go back to my slide. Uh, so, so that was on the data aggregator, the set of web services available on the data aggregator. Um, you also have on the data aggregator um, more web services under, under the slash type catalog endpoint. And these specific web services you see here, these are uh, targeted at uh, providing certification capabilities. And, and really, Kishan will dive into this to, in the latter part of the, the, uh, the webcast. So I'm, I'm just going to, just touching on this just to let you know there's another endpoint here that gives you certification capabilities. So I'm going to move on. And then the other uh, big set of web services that we have here um, are on the, on the performance center. So on the UI, uh, CAPC, it has a, a set of web services. So if you go to uh, PC slash center, that's the endpoint. If you go there, so your PC host colon 8181 slash PC slash center, that gives you a list of all the web services. And really, clicking on these links will get you to the schema for those web services. You can um, you can manage things like tenants, groups, users, etc. with these uh, web services. Again, if you click on one of these links, 
it's going to take you to the schema. Um, the documentation is available when you go to PC slash center slash rect. That endpoint will actually um, show you uh, this content uh, in, in the same fashion as what you saw in the DA. Uh, and clicking on any of these links will take you to the documentation. Uh, you can again perform uh, CRUD operations on these uh, web services. Again, every web service is different. Every web service, you, know, you actually go into the documentation, you find out what type of operations you can perform on that web service. And on the Performance Center one, there, there is authentic authentication. Uh, so you do have to log in um, as your administrative user to be able to, uh, to, be able to administer these web services. So um, I'm going to switch over again to a quick demo of that. This is on my PC uh, host 8181 uh, slash PC slash center, and that takes me to uh, make it a little more visible uh, to the available set of REST web services on the, the, the performance center. Uh, and so as you can see, there's uh, um, tenants, users, groups, and, and devices, and so on uh, that you see here from CAPC. It's available from CAPC. Now, clicking on any of these, uh, again, requires you to uh, Authenticate here, and you know you can actually take a look at the schema to be able to see what type of attributes you can um, use for more advanced. Uh, what type of attributes you can use for more advanced queries. So, uh, so that was a quick look at the, the actual web services and get how to get to the schema. Now for documentation, if you go to slash the PC center rest, and that has, and it looks more like the DA web services. Um, so if I go into, um, for example, SNMP profiles, um, again, documented in very similar fashion, uh, the different CRUD operations that you can perform are documented right here. Um, and uh, you know again tells you what URL, what HTTP method, and, and so on. So going back to the slides again, uh, moving on from uh, this. So this I already showed you, uh, you know how to get to the actual schema. Um, uh, at least I showed you this for the, the PC um, web services, and I'll show you again in, in, in another slide in how to get to these for the DA. Um, the DA web services, too, when you, once you get to the self-documenting part, you can get access to the schema so uh, that you can figure out what uh, uh, attributes you can use um, when you perform these uh, CRUD operations against the endpoints. So on the, for, for example, right here, you can see, um, you know, the, for each CRUD operation, uh, the, the, the schema is provided right there. So if you're trying to create, if you're trying to do a filtered uh, get list, for example, the, the, the schema is right there. You click on it and you find out uh, what attributes you can use for that operation. All right, um, now we're going to get into some common query patterns. Uh, for the DA, um, you know, you, to, to, to get, you know, for example, all, all of a type, so all of a particular type of resource, for example, if you want to get all your devices or all your device components, uh, it would be, you know, 8581 slash rest slash, you know, whatever that type is, so whatever that endpoint devices or device components. Uh, if you want to get a single item, a specific device, for example, then it's going to be rest slash devices slash the ID of that particular device, and that'll get you just that device. 
um, if you want to scope by tenant, then you basically do a re flash rest slash tenant and provide the tenant ID. So if you have if you have a multi-tenant environment uh, and you want to see your Coke devices and versus your your, your so, so if you have a Coke tenant and a Pepsi tenant, that's our typical example: Coke and Pepsi tenants. Uh, and you want to see your Coke devices versus your your Pepsi devices, you would go to your you know, Coke tenant ID slash devices uh, you know, versus your Pepsi tenant ID slash devices to get the scope by tenant. Uh, now to something a little more advanced. Uh, doing a filtered yet or filtered yet list is, uh, you know, for example, um, and I'll show you an example of this. Now, um, you know, I, uh, let, let's say uh, for, for most of you guys, you have a large volume of device, you, you, you know, you have a large set of devices on your uh, performance management system, and um, you don't want to you don't want to get all your devices uh, in a request. What you want to do, and, I, and and typically if you if you really have a large volume, uh, then you you might not be able to get uh, there's there's a there's a hard limit um, on our uh, of 200,000 I believe items on our web service responses. So if if it exceeds a certain amount, you're not going to be able to see those. So which is why filtering is very important because because you want to filter by um, let's say um, you know I want to see all the devices that uh, uh, you know you can either filter by devices that belong to a certain group. Uh, maybe you could, you could do uh, devices that belong to a certain uh, data collector even, which is the example I'm going to show you. Um, so, so which will combine a bunch of these slides together in that example. Uh, why, don't, why don't we move, move to that, uh, you know, a little bit of demo there on that. Uh, and uh, and it'll, be, it'll be more clear. Um, So uh, going back here, um, and let me see. Here. So now, then, you know, time to bring out my REST client. Let me uh, actually. I'm going to. I'm going to just close. Uh, I have an instance of the REST client already open. I'm just going to close that and start fresh because every time I bring up the client, I have to set certain. Um, set it up in a certain way, uh, and I wanted to show you guys uh, some of that too. Give me one second here. Bring up. Oops. So it takes a takes a second for the client to come up, and as soon as it's up, I'll share it with you. All right. Here's the REST client. Uh, hopefully, everybody's able to see the REST client here. So this is the WizTools.org one. It's my it's my favorite REST client. So I'm, always using this one. Again, get a feel for what you like, and, and there's lots of clients available, uh, and find the, the, the best one uh, for you. So um, earlier in my, you know, uh, as I was showing you the REST web services, um, let's, let's go. So this, uh, doing a get on this web service, which is 8581 slash REST slash devices, gets me all my devices. So you can see, so all my devices are returned here. But I only want to see, uh, for, for example, if I want to only want to see devices that belong to a certain um, data collector. Now, and now I'm going to do a filtered get list. I come back to the self documentation here, and, and, and you know, let me show you what I meant earlier when I said, and you use the schema to really uh, find the properties that you want to, for example, filter by. So in this in this example, I'll, you know, if I'm, I'm, I want to do a filtered get list of devices that belong to a particular data collector. So I'm going to go in and say, um, you know, go into the schema. So, this, so you click on this link here to get to the schema, and um, oops, 
sorry, wrong one. So click on this link here to get to the filtered get list, uh, the schema for the filter select. And it, this actually tells you, you know, what you can filter by. And I'm going to search for um, data collector or DCM ID. So that's the the DCM ID there. Uh, so that that actually says, okay, I can I can filter by the data collection manager ID here. This is this is what I want to do. It's all of these properties. I'm going to pick this one here and say, give me all my data uh, devices that you know belong to this data collector. So I'm going to grab that ID. That, that's really what I wanted. Uh, and then uh, I'm going to craft up this. Uh, so I have a little cheat sheet here to help me out today. Uh, I'm going to craft up a filter select um, here. And in that filter select, as you see, uh, my you know, the parameter I'm going to filter by is the data collection manager ID, DCM ID. And I just showed you how to how to figure out what you you know what are all the things I can filter by. You know, these are all the things you can filter by. Uh, just by going to the documentation and going to uh, that schema definition right there, um, and then you know basically you're going to say you know, this DCM ID equals and provided my data collector ID. Now how did I come up with this? Um, you know there's a REST web service for that. So if you go to REST and go to uh, data. So there's a data collection manager info endpoint here. If I go to that and just go list all the all of the data collectors, so rest slash DCM gives me all of my data collectors, and I'm looking through and I want I want the DCM ID, right? And I found okay. So for this particular data collector, here's my DCM ID. I pull it out of that, that, and that's that's really what I stuck in my XML here. They probably we can't see the XML that you're generating oh. right now. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Eddie. All right. Uh, so, so hopefully you, you guys can see my cheat sheet now. And uh, so on that, so there's a filter select that I put together. Uh, and on that filter select, and this is the parameter that I, I showed you guys in the other, uh, in the schema definition, I said, okay, I'm going to filter by data collection manager ID the DCM ID. And I'm basically saying, you know, where DCM ID equals, um, and I'm providing the DC, uh, the DC ID from, you know, I pulled it up from here. I went to rest slash DCM. I looked at all of my data collectors and pulled out the ID of the one I wanted to filter by. Um, so I'm going to grab this filter select section, go back to my rest client, and um, and if you go back to this guy here, and look at how you do a filtered get list for, sorry, I'm in the wrong web service here, slash device. So go back to this documentation, devices slash documentation. Uh, and if you look at this filtered get list, you're going to see that the URL is devices slash filtered. The HTTP method is post. So I'm going to go back and make sure I have the right URL, which is filter, right? Uh, and in the right HTTP method, which is post. And then I have a body here. Uh, and I have, I'm going to say string body. You can also stick the, uh, the filter select that I'm doing here in a file. And you can give uh, the tool a file body. But I'm just going to say string body. Um, I'm going to stick the, uh, the filter select in there. And uh, you know, remember that everything in the in the on the performance manager, all, all the rest, uh, you know, the, the, it's uh, it's all using the XML format. So I want to edit the uh, content type on the tool here to say application XML. Okay, now I'm ready to actually do a post on this devices slash filtered web service to get me a filtered list of devices that belong to this data collector. I do that. Mm -hmm. 
and it gives me you know, just the devices that belong to that data collector. So this is just an example of doing a, a slightly more complex operation there, doing a filtered uh, get list. Let me go back to my slides now. And uh, move on here. Um, in, a, in a similar fashion to what I did with the DA, uh, showing you query pattern, patterns there, uh, I'm also going to show you some query patterns on the PC uh, side, side of things. So on the, on the PC web services, you have to do a PC center web service slash type. You know, that can be a users or tenants uh, to, to basically get a list of all your users or all your tenants. Um, to get a, a, a single um, item, you can do a PC slash center slash web service slash type and give it an ID name and a value pair. Um, and basically every web service has a get ID names operation. Uh, you can use that operation to pull out uh, ID names uh, so that you can, you know, so, so you know, what can I, uh, what can I query this web service with? Uh, you know, let's say, and I'm doing the groups web service, which is the example I'll show you. Uh, how do I know how to query them? Can I query groups by uh, just the group ID, or can I do something else? You can actually query groups by the group path, for example. But in this case, um, you know, a, a tenant can be queried by tenant name. And how do you know what you can use here? Uh, you you go to basically do the get ID names operation on the tenants web service, and that gives you the list of ID names you can you can actually uh, use. So the identifiers you can use, uh, and I'll show you that in an example um, in a, in a, an upcoming slide. All right, and so the examples that I'm going to be uh, doing today or sticking with today is. Uh, I'm going to do uh, an example of creating some groups uh, with some group rules. Uh, I'm going to create a discovery profile uh, and then uh, actually run that discovery profile all through web services. So now I'm you know, switching over to the browser again. So uh, let me start with Enter Rest and uh, go to Groups. So this is my uh, the, the, the documentation for Groups. And if you look at uh, uh, this, you know, the first bit here always gives you that get ID names operation. And that for so for any web service, and if you just do web service slash whatever that um, endpoint or resource is for here, for example, groups, uh, and then say give me ID names, that'll tell you what you can filter by or what you can query. Uh, so web service groups ID names, the identifiers you can query by, and that tells me for groups I can use group item ID and group path. So I'm going to use group path because I like to use names and not IDs. Um, so I'm going to say group path, and as you can see, my browser is auto completing there. Um, all groups. So give me everything under all groups, and uh, that basically, you know, gets me all of my groups. Uh, you know, it's not very easy to read, but uh, you know, it does get me everything uh, here. So, so that that basically says, you know, I have some groups here. I have a um, Frame Relay group, uh, a Linux group. I have uh, some Acme Packet Session Border Controller groups, uh, some VM groups, and, and so I've just basically created a whole bunch of these, uh, that, and you can see them all under all groups because they're all in the same hierarchy. Um, so, so by group path, that's that's what I used here, uh, and the way I did that again, folks, is uh, by going to ID names. Uh, this should exist on all the PC web services. This is this why that, you know we put it in that uh, query pattern slide, so you can, ha you can basically have that uh, as a reference. So you go into the ID names and you get uh, group item ID and group path. Those are the two that I can uh, 
you know, I can basically identify groups with, and I chose group path. All right, I'm going to go back to my cheat sheet here for a bit um, and go to So for the, for the group's um, uh, web service, um, we use the following URL, um, and I'm going to let me grab. share with you what I'm doing here. I'm just going to um, creating a, um, a group called My Routers and uh, basically placing all devices in there that uh, are a type router. Um, that's my, my rule that as part of the group here. So that's the name of my group is my router, the custom group, and I put in a rule uh, basically that says um, you know, where the the type or the subtype of the of the item um, is actually and the item is type device, the subtype uh, equals router. So so all devices that are routers um, get thrown into this group called my my routers. See my uh, REST client again? Kishan, can you see my REST client now? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. So, so on the REST client, I went to the groups web service, and I'm doing go to method, and the method is post. Um, if I go to the body, this is the body. I just I, I just crafted up here. Uh, I stuck that in. Uh, it's basically going to create the my routers group. Uh, let's jump into the UI for a sec. Log in. And go to groups. So I, you know, pretty light. I don't have much in here. Uh, I'm going to go here and run this web service now. And it says unauthorized. So, like I said, for the PC web service, it actually requires authentication. So you go here on this particular web um, REST client and go to basic authentication here. Uh, go over and admin. Admin, that's my uh, administrative um, user, admin user. Uh, and I'm going to go back to body here. So now that I have that, um, I should be authorized. And um, that actually came back with an OK. And I come back to the UI. I'm just going to hit refresh on the UI here. Um, and there's the group I just created called My Routers, um, the items. So all, my, my rule kicked in and brought in all routers into this group. So, so that, and just to quickly demonstrate to you how you could use your web services to automate creation of groups and, and group rules and, and get um, 
you know, your devices, and, and, and uh, so your devices automatically into your groups and collections. Uh, the other example I had for you is uh, actually doing a uh, discovery using uh, the REST web services. And for that, you have to actually use the DA uh, REST web service. So if I go back to uh, the DA REST web services, you should see that there is one here for discovery profile. So this, this is, again gives you how to do CRUD on discovery profiles, um, and I, what I what I always like to do is, you know, get the existing discovery profiles, and then use that as sort of like a, a template there for um, anything I'm going to create that's custom. To, you know, as the first time when I start with something. Just to, there's going to be a lot of stuff here that uh, is not relevant when you import it in, uh, and you know you'll, you'll get you'll probably get some error messages that, that say you know some things are not relevant. You can just rip those things out and continue, uh, you know, until it basically lets you uh, import in a discovery profile. Um, you know, for for my demo here, I have I actually have um, a discovery profile ready to go here. And I'll stick this in, and I'll, and I'll go through some of the key sections here. So let me just uh, I just stuck that in. Uh, I'm going to um, for discovery profiles. Uh, they are tenant scoped, uh, and so when you want to create a discovery profile, you have to um, scope it by tenant. So that um, so first thing to do is actually go to the tenant's work service here and get the ID of your tenant. So that's something to go get. Uh, so tenant slash one, that's the only tenant I have. Uh, so under this tenant, I want to see all the discovery profiles. That gives me, you know, that's the, that's the discovery profile that is scoped to this tenant. And now that's where I can perform my operation on. So I'm going to go, so under this tenant, under discovery profile, I'm going to post this new discovery profile that I'm calling Framingham Routers. Um, now, let me just walk through this a bit. Okay, so I'm um, just calling it uh, Premium Routers. I'm giving it an IP range of, uh, for, of these IPs. I'm giving it a list of these IPs. I can give it a list of these IPs. I think what I'll do is I'll, yeah, I just wanted to demonstrate that I can give, you know, I can in, insert lists of IPs. And also um, host names. If you want to do something by host name, you can do that as well. The the, uh, the important pieces here are important pieces here are uh, SNP profile ID. You actually have to go get the SNP profile ID of the SNP profile you want to use. Um, so so that you know, uh, in, in an easy way to do this is if you've already got discovery profiles set up the way you want um, and you want them set up, uh, you could just go to an existing one like this one. Uh, and I basically I know this one has my default SNP profile. And I basically just looked up the ID from uh, the existing discovery profile. I said, okay, I'm going to use this 1978 because I know it's the discovery, uh, it's the default uh, uh, SNMP, sorry, it's the default SNMP profile. Uh, so that was the way I went about quickly getting this SNMP uh, profile. There are other ways to, you can actually use web services to go get the SNMP profile. Uh, and uh, you know, actually use the right ID. Um, so just like how I did tenant, you know, if you did, um, there's a REST web service for SNMP profile, and uh, you know, that has the ID as well. So that's the other way of doing it. Um, similarly, I, I did, uh, and I found out what uh, uh, IP domain ID 
so I, have, I only have a single IP domain, and uh, that the ID of that domain is two. So I, you know, I, I went uh, rest slash, I think it's IP domain, uh, and found out the ID of my IP domain. Um, otherwise, pretty straightforward, and you can again uh, use host names, IP lists, IP ranges. Uh, all of this is defined in the schema. Uh, so now I can go ahead and actually post that see what happens. It's a success. So if I go over to my UI now, I should be able to go here and actually see a new Framingham routers. Discovery profile has never been run before. And I'll actually show you how to run the web, web service as well. Uh, sorry, run the discovery profile as well through web services. Uh, so now that I have these, what I, what I will do is I'll, do, I'll run, run a get method. I can either do it here or I can go look at it through uh, the browser. I, was, I, I do like looking at this through the browser. So, so I'll just do it through the browser. Uh, rest, because I can easily search for things. Every, oops, I, Discovery profiles, and it gives me the list of all the discovery profiles. Let me go find the one that says Framingham routers. That's this one. So if I go look up the ID 2269, now let me go test that I can get just the one discovery profile that I've got here. Now that I, you know, I can actually, I can get just the one that I have here, and um, I'm going to update it. So I'm going to do a put to just the run status. So get rid of all of this. Uh, whoops, go to the body. Get rid of all of it. So the, the method is a put method because we're doing an update. Go to body. Get rid of that. And just say, you know, I'm going to, the run, the run status of this is ready. It's going to go from ready to start. And that basically kicks off uh, the actual discovery profile, so runs it. So let me go ahead and post that. That says success. So that should actually reflect now in the UI. This thing should be running. There it is. It's running. OK, and it's actually done. And I can go look at the history to see what's discovered. And there's a bunch of devices here that have been discovered and a bunch that were inaccessible. But yeah, so that, but, uh, that completes uh, my demo that I had to show you guys today. Uh, basically just, you know, how do you use these uh, REST web services to automate some of the things that you need to automate? Uh, you know, the examples I showed you today were uh, creating groups and group rules as well as uh, creating and running a discovery profile uh, using so group, groups and group rules using the PC web services, uh, creating a discovery profile and running it using the DA web services. Uh, that's about all I had. I'm going to now pass the ball to Kishan, who's going to take you through um, some advanced uh, certification capabilities. The certification um, web services that I basically glossed over. Uh, Kishan, let me give you presenter privs. All right. Okay, thanks. Setting up. Okay. Okay, do you see me move the slides over to the next? Yep. All right. These are the ones you went through. All right. Thanks, Prabhu. Um, so the next half an hour or so, we'll go over the self-certification web services that we have available uh, in PM. So what is self-certification? Self-certification basically provides the capability to, for you to self-certify you know, new technologies or add new vendor certifications in your environment that does not c come out of the box. So you know, there are 
different scenarios that you will need to, you know, do some sort of certification. And some of that is, you know, you might need new support for a new vendor for an existing technology. So a new device comes out, you need to pull CPU information, memory information, and we don't have it out of the box. So you would need to go and create a new vendor certificate. Uh, you need to maybe update a way a particular metric is calculated. Uh, one thing that comes into mind is maybe the naming convention we use is not, you know, satisfactory to your needs. So you may want to go and update the vendor certificate so that, it, you know, creates the name differently uh, to your needs. Uh, then you might need, you may have a scenario where you need to add new metrics to an out-of-the-box certification. So in this case, you would need to, you know, update the metric family and update the vendor certificate. And then finally, the last scenario would be, you know, a brand new technology. You want to uh, certify, you know, maybe frame relay or, you know, some cryptographic device with some new technology. So if that's not available out of the box, you would need to create, you know, a new component, a metric family, and a vendor certificate so that you can certify that device. So all these scenarios that I just covered here, for you to be able to perform these actions to create new vendor certs, new metric families, update them, all this is done through using the PowerCert, you know, self-certification web services available in performance management. So this web service provides, you know, users the development capabilities to be able to create your self-certificates. Uh, so it allows you to, you know, export uh, existing certifications. You can import new ones or update your custom certification. So you can export, import, or update, you know, metric families, vendor certifications, and custom components. So there's also a lot of validation that's uh, built in to the web services. So if you try to, you know, create a new vendor certificate or a metric family with missing tags or attributes, it will, you know, validate that and let you know where, which line, you know, what exactly is missing. missing. So it makes you know, life a lot easier when you're trying to create these certifications. And one thing I do suggest is to take a look at the Power Users Certification Guide because that goes in detail as to, you know, what tags are available, you know, what you need to provide when you're creating these certifications. All right, so uh, the main web service uh, for self-certification, it sits on the data aggregator, so it's DA host colon 8581 slash type catalog. Now, what Prabhu went over was the REST web services. This is now the type catalog web services that provide you certification capabilities. So within the type catalog uh, web services, there are three different endpoints or resources available. There's the device component, the metric family, and the SNMP vendor certification. So the device component section basically allows you to you know, define your components, uh, which is basically a, you know, a class of your component. It also defines, you know, how you sync uh, items into CAPC and how they're represented in CAPC. The metric family basically defines your metric family, you know, what the set of related metrics for the supported technology, and it's, you know, the normalized metrics. And then the SNMP vendor certification resource, you know, shows you you know, how you collect the raw data and map them to the metrics in the metric family. So let me quickly show you that here. Uh, so let's see. All right, Prabhu, can you confirm that you can see this? I can. Okay, let me make that. All right, so I'm going to go to my type catalog web services, and, and as you can see, I have three uh, endpoints here, the device component, metric family, and SNMP vendor certification. And just as in the REST web services, you know, the type catalog web services are also self-documented. So you can come in here and see what operation, what CRUD operations are supported. Okay, so in the case of device components, you know, we can do creates, we can do get, we can up do updates, but deletes are not supported. Right, so you can see what CRUD operations are supported, and then you know the HTTP methods that you would need to you know uh, use when you're trying to perform a certain uh, operation. Okay, so if you're trying to do a create, you need to do a post, a get, a get, an update, a put, and then also the URL associated with that particular operation. And just as in the REST web services, it provides you all the XSDs that gives you the schema when you're trying to you know create one of these uh, these one of the paths for a certification, right? 
So this is the device component again. The components define the class of the component. It also defines the uh, sync definition between uh, CAPC and the data aggregator. So if we look at the base URI, you know, the first link here, it will give us all the components that are currently in the data aggregator. So you see that there's a lot of components in here. All right. So what you can do is if you're creating your own custom component, you can come in here, look at one of these components, and kind of take that as a template for you to create your own component. Uh, one thing I would suggest is the sessions component. That's a pretty basic one here. Uh, let's see. Oh, session, maybe. There we go. So yeah, so this one right here, that's a basic one. That's, that's pretty much the same format that you would use to create your uh, component. So that's one that you could use. Uh, going back, the metric family, just as before, you know, it self-documenting, you know, it shows you all the CRUD operations that are available and the methods that you would need to use, the uh, HTTP methods and the URLs. And again, if you click on the base URI, it will list all the metric families that are available that is known to the data aggregator. So this, this takes a little bit of time to load, so that's why it's, you know, spinning here a bit. So there you go. So here's all the metric family definitions uh, that's available for, you know, on the data aggregator. So again, just as the component, if you're creating your, uh, creating a brand new metric family, what you can do is come in here, you know, and use an existing metric family and then customize it to your needs. Uh, if you needed to update an existing metric family, you would still need to come here and find out what the facet name is and then update it that way. We'll go through an example as to how you do that. Okay, so, and then finally, the SNMP vendor certificate, this is what defines how we collect the raw data from a device and then map them back to the metrics in the metric family. So here's all your CRUD operations that are available. Uh, again, deletes are not supported. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is deletes are not, none of these web services, the type catalog web services or the endpoints support the delete uh, function. So you can only create, update, or get uh, from these uh, different endpoints under the type catalog uh, web services. Uh, and then also it provides you to access these. And then clicking on the base URI here again, will provide all the SNMP vendor certifications available on the data aggregator. All right, so a whole bunch of them out of the box. So back to my presentation. Okay, so um, the the next few slides will go over just uh, you know showing you you know, performing these operations on the VIS tools, REST client, that's what I'll use as well going through the scenario. So in here you see that I'm performing a get uh, on the, you know, the components, the metric families, and the SNMP vendor certifications, and performing a get on that. And on the bottom, HTTP response, we see all the, we, we would see all the uh, vendor certificates or the metric families or components. Now we were able to do that through the, uh, um, ex, no, not the Explorer, but uh, the web, web browser, that's what I'm looking for. We, we can do that through the web browser because all we're doing is a get there. But when we try to do uh, additional functions like, you know, a post or a put, we would need to use the best client, right? So in the next slide here, we are performing a get here now on a specific uh, vendor certificate. We have defined a particular ID here. So this is the Cisco CPU MIB. A vendor certificate, vendor certificate that they are trying to perform a get on, all right, and return the results. And the next slide here shows us we are performing a post where we are creating a new vendor certification. All right, so just as Prabhu mentioned earlier, uh, since we work with XML in the PM web services, we need to set the uh, char type to and char set to be you know application XML and char set UTF-8. And then you uh, perform your operation. And as I mentioned earlier, that the web services perform some sort of validation against what you're trying to pass it. Here we see that you know this has come back and informed us that you know this particular vendor certificate, the display name already exists in the type catalog in the data aggregator. So 
we need to pr provide a unique display name. So it does quick checks of this nature, and it all, of, of course, checks against the XSD as well to make sure that you have, you know, the types and attributes set correctly within your vendor set or metric family or component. All right, and then here is the is a screenshot showing you, you know, we are doing an update. Now we're doing a put against the custom vendor set, and we are updating the display name here, and then it finally tells us that the certificate, vendor certificate has been successfully updated. Okay, so let's go through a couple of examples so that we kind of go through uh, some scenarios. So one one common scenario is that you know someone might want to add additional metrics to be monitored for an existing out of the box metric family and a vendor set. So in this case, let's say that for memory, you know, your Linux team has come back and or Linux systems team has come back and said that, hey, we need to manage uh, or provide, get data and uh, get reports on cached or buffered memory. Okay, so since we already have a memory metric family and backing vendor sets, first we need to find out, you know, what's the vendor set that's being used for those types of devices, and then also need to find out the metric family name and then update that metric family so that we can start reporting on you know, cached or buffered uh, metrics, right? Uh, one thing to keep in mind is there's no way right now to, be, to update out of the box metric families of vendor set. So in this case, what we would need to do is export the out of the box metric family and vendor set update them by you know changing the names and stuff and adding the new attributes that we want to pull and then posting them or creating a new metric family and vendor set for our custom memory uh, requirements. All right, so let's go through that example right now. So I'm gonna go back and uh, share my desktop again. All right, it's coming up. All right. So um, first thing we need to know, do is we need to find out what the metric family name is. Now I know in, in CAPC, when you go and look at uh, the metric families, as soon as this comes up, all right. So I have a Linux collection in here and I have a system in here. And if I look in here, uh, look at the poll metric families, we're currently pulling memory, all right? And we see that it's using the UC Davis memory vendor certificate. So what we need to do is we need to update the met memory metric family and the UC Davis memory vendor cert so that we can add these additional metrics. Okay, because if we look at the metrics that are uh, provided by memory, we do not see cached as one of the metrics. All right, so we don't see cached. So if you look for cached, all right, so cached is not a metric that we uh, report on for memory. So that's what we want to add. So we know that we need to update the memory metric family and the UC Davis memory vendor set for this particular device. So let's go and find out how we can perform that, right? So first what we need to do is we need to come into the metric family uh, web service or the endpoint and find out what the internal metric family name is so that we can export it and then perform an update. So what I would normally do is come in here, go to the metric families, you know, pull up all the metric families that are available within uh, PM, and then do a search for the display name. Uh, so as soon as this fills in, Taking its time here. Let's try that again. There we go. 
All right. So now what we'll do is we'll do a search for oops. What happened? Oh. Oops. He's rerunning it, I guess. Let's see. waiting for it to come back and display correctly so that we can do the search on the display name. There we go. All right. So now let's do a search for the display name. Uh, since it's memory internally, it's known as physical memory. All right. So here's the display name. And if we go up, we scroll up. Okay, we can find out what the facet name is. The facet name is what is this metric family known internally to the DA by, and that's what you need to use to export or update an um, what's it called, an a, a metric family, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to copy that and then go to normalize memory info, and you can see now this is the structure, the metric family structure for the, for the out-of-the-box memory metric family. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that URL and go to a, let me share this. Okay, so I brought up my uh, REST client, so I'm going to put that URL in here to perform a get, and that should provide me the body for that metric family. So I'm going to copy that and put that into a new uh, into a text editor here. I will share that. Okay. All right. So I have it in here. So since we are going to create a new metric family, we, since we can update out of the box metric families, we need to create a new metric family for memory. So for our custom metric family. So I'm, uh, I'm going to call it custom normalized metric family. So this is what you need to update when you're, you know, creating a new metric family. Okay. So that's done. The next thing what you need to do is, of course update the display name. Okay, so down here we have a display name. Remember, this needs to be unique, so I'm going to call it custom physical memory. All right. And also the table name. This is the table name in Vertica. That's where it keeps all the data associated with, you know, this particular metric family. So I'm going to call it custom physical memstat. Okay. So, uh, now we've updated the metric family, we need to still add the metric that we are interested in, right? So the cached uh, metric. So cool. let's, all I'm going to do is I'm going to just copy one of these, uh, let's copy one of the other ones, the total or something. There we go. So let's copy total. All right, I'm just going to copy that. And add that new attribute. And call it cached. Okay. And I can say total cached memory. Okay. Everything else I'm just going to keep the same as it, as it is. Uh, you can update these add additional attributes as required. You know, all those you know attributes that you can put in or define are in the self-certification guide, so I would highly recommend taking a look at that. So now we've add the, added the cached uh, memory uh, metric. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this, and we're going to post this. So we're going to create a new metric family. So we're going to do a post, and the body is going to be string. Our content type is application XML. Oops. XML, all right, and UTFA and paste that. Now, 
where do I need to post this? What's the URL that I need to post this into? So I can go back to my web service here. Yeah. Right, metric family, and it says to create a metric family, I need to the URL to uh, to create a metric family is type catalog slash metric family. So I can just pretty much just copy that, put it in there. Oops. There we go, and now I'm good to go. So let's go ahead and perform the post. All right, so it came back and said that the metric family has been successfully uploaded to the data aggregator. So what we can do is we can go and take a look at the data aggregator now. So if I do a custom, click on metric families and then do a custom search. There we go, so there's my custom physical memory and here's our new metric called cache, all right? So now, if we look at the vendor certs, there are no vendor certs, you know, backing up this particular metric family. So what we need to do is now pull that vendor cert for the UC Davis memory that, you know, was pulling all that data originally and see whether we can pull cached from that, uh, from that MIB. So I, I've already done some research prior to this, so if I bring up, a MIB browser here. So this is the UC Davis uh, MIB, and if I if you look under this memory branch, we have a memcached uh, OID that's available that we can pull data from. Okay, so here we see that you know it's pulling data for memory cached. Okay, oops, there we go. So now you can see that. There we go. Okay, so what we are going to do is we're going to update the UC Davis vendor set. Basically, we're going to do an export and then change the uh, vendor cert and then perform a post so that we create the vendor cert and associate that vendor cert with this particular metric family so that we can start collecting uh, the cached metric. All right, so if we go back to metric families and go back to our type catalog, so the next thing we need to know is uh, what is the internal name for the UC Davis memory vendor cert. Okay, so we're gonna bring up all the vendor certifications that we know of, get a listing, and then we gotta do a search for the display name again. Let's wait for it to quickly come back. All right, now that's back, so we can do a search again. So we're gonna do a search for UC Davis memory. Oh, so there we go. So there's the display name, that's what we know within CAP. So now if we go up, we need to see the facet name is UCD memory. So if we go slash UCD memory, we would get the XML definition for this particular vendor search. So what we can do is we can copy that and perform a get against it so that we get the XML back. The reason I do this in a REST client is because if you try to copy it from a web browser, it gets all additional you know, return lines and it, it's not formed correctly. So you, you want to use a REST client to you know, do a get and then take the, you know, the returned XML from there so that you, you get the proper XML format and then you don't get any extra uh, characters. So now we we'll put the XML for the vendor set. So we're going to create a new vendor set. We're going to change this to custom, this internal name, custom UCD memory. Okay. And we need to change the display name. We're going to call it custom UC Davis memory. Okay. And the other important thing that we need to update is right here on line 42, this is where the vendor cert and the metric family are linked. So in here you see you know, the destination cert. The destination cert basically defines what is this vendor cert, which metric family is this vendor cert associated with. So, and this is the internal name of the 
uh, vendor search, right, uh, of the metric family. So if we update that to what we defined earlier, right here, custom normalized memory info, All right, I'm going to put that in there, okay, and then we're going to update this uh, metric fam uh, this vendor search actually. So I'm just going to copy this total. All right, and then the destination attribute is what is the name of the attribute in the metric family. So in the metric family, we created something called cache, right? Cache, C A C H E S E. Sorry, let's see where is that? Uh, right under total. There we go. Okay, so that's. That's what we're going to put. And the expression, the, within the expression, is what is the raw value going to map to? So what's the oid? What's the name of the attribute, right? So in here, if we look, fortunately for us, we, we are already pulling this attribute. It's already defined within this metric family. So all we need to do is just copy memcached, OK, and then put it into memcached. Uh, where is this cache? OK, so now we mapped the raw value into the metric family metric. Okay, so once we've done that, we've updated the few things that we need. Now we'll just perform a post again. Of course, we are not performing a post against uh, the metric family, so we need to find out what the URL is for that. Okay, so to create a SLMP vendor cert, it's type catalog certifications SLMP, so we can just copy that. Okay, and then perform the post. All right, the post, the body. There we go. All right, so that has now gone in, and it it has been posted. The vendor set has been created. So now, if you go back to metric families, and let's uh, click on this again. There we go. So now you see that a new our custom UC Davis memory vendor cert is available. Now for you to be able to apply this to your collection, you would just create a monitoring profile, right? The usual, you know, the usual steps that you would do, create a new monitoring profile and add the custom metric family to it and then associate it with the collection. So we just say custom mem. So we just Look for custom physical memory. All right. So I'm going to where's my custom? There it is. Associate that with the collection. So this was on my Linux. Okay. So if we go back here. We should now see that we are pulling our custom memory in a few couple of minutes here. It should update so the data aggregator is still catching up uh, and applying these the vendor cert to get it supported. So there we go, the vendor cert's in. Still performing its check. Hi, Keyshawn, just to check on the time. We have about four minutes. Yep. So once we're done with this, we can turn to uh, question and answers, I guess. Thank you. Okay. So there we go. So we've created a, a, you know, a custom metric family and a custom vendor mm -hmm. cert. Now it's supported, and we see that they're pulling data. So if you look at the metrics, right, and look at the custom physical memory, we see that they're pulling the cached, mem cached is you know associated with the cache metric so after a couple of minutes you know after a few poll cycles we will be able to pull and report on the cache metric so in addition to this you know obviously you can perform updates against uh, the vendor set so you know when you're doing an update you would need to define you know what your so if for example if you're doing an update it provides you what is your URL, and you need to define what the name is, where the name is the name of the vendor cert, 
and this is the internal name, not the display name. So it, this is this holds true for vendor certificates, metric families, and components. Okay, so since we are running short on time, what we'll do is uh, stop sharing now. And so the other scenario that I wanted to go through was creating a custom, uh, you know, metric family component and vendor cert for a new technology. We, we don't have time for that right now, but it's pretty much the same set of steps. What you would do is, you know, you would go and for a template, you know, use existing components or metric families and vendor certs and then, you know, customize it to your needs and then make sure, you know, you update the names and the, you know, for example, for the metric family, you need to update it, update the name, the table name, the display name. So those are important parts of the, you know, of the components, metric families, and vendor search that you need to keep track of and make sure that you're updating correctly. So uh, with that, I think we will uh, move on to questions. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, if you wish to ask a question, simply press start and the number one on your telephone keypad. We'll pause for just a moment to compile the Q&A roster. Um, while you're doing that, um, this is Prabhu, can you hear me? Yes. Yep. Uh, there's, a, uh, there's a question on the Q&A uh, from um, Steve, uh, uh, Steve Weinert. Um, and uh, it, it, it was a question regarding the templates that I was using when I was presenting. Um, you know, my, the stuff I pulled out of my cheat sheet. You now he was, he, his question was, how did I come up with those templates? Uh, very, very similar to what um, uh, Kishan was saying. That uh, you know, I, I, what I typically do is I export uh, some content that uh, out of the system. For example, I already have discovery profiles that exist in the system today. I just, you know, I go look at all my discoveries. So REST slash discovery profiles gives me all my discovery profiles. Now, you know, I pick a, a, the ID of a specific one that I want to mimic. Uh, start with that, uh, and then sort of compare it with the schema. Now, remember, every uh, you know, it's, it's schema, there are schema definitions for every type of operation you want to perform. So in this particular case, I did a create of a discovery profile. So go into create of a discovery profile. Look at the schema for creating discovery profiles, and that definition. Um, there are some things, so, so when I export a discovery profile, I'm going to get uh, much more than what's in the schema. Uh, and when you, for, in order for me to do that create operation, I look at the, the create schema and see what's, uh, what's unnecessary. So I could try to just post as is after I export something, um, but it's can, the, the web service uh, validation will kick in and will tell you that you know, it wasn't expecting uh, an ID or a relates to tag or a is also tag. All of that is because those are not things, or creation time tag, those are things that are not defined for uh, the create, by, by the create schema definition. So if they're not in that schema definition, we're gonna validate and say, hey, you have something uh, that's not in there. Remove it and try again and, and your XML will, will, will go through and you'll actually be able to create a new discovery profile, for example. So that's kind of how I came up with uh, that XML I showed you. And there are no audio questions at this time. Okay, so we are um, a little bit over. Um, I just want so thank you, Kishan and Prabhu, very much. That was an excellent presentation. Really appreciate uh, you spending the time to educate us all. Uh, we will be posting uh, the recording to the community board, uh, so be on the lookout for that. Uh, the next webcast is July 15th. Please mark your calendar. Uh, the topic will be the IM Product Group Roadmap, Vision and Strategy uh, by Product Management. So uh, that will be a great presentation. Uh, and please take a moment to answer our nine-question survey, as Dildar mentioned earlier. Uh, thank you very much for taking the time to join this webcast today. Everyone have a wonderful day. This concludes today's call. You may now disconnect. Thank you.